Let's talk about composition contests. Now I've been applying to these things for over a decade now and I have to say a lot of them were really helpful for me as far as my career goes and a lot of them are a waste of time. So today I'm going to break down for you what to look for in a composition contest, what things are worth applying to, what kind of things are not worth applying to. So let's get right into it. The best kind of contests have multiple winners, the entry fee is lower than $30, and there is a track record for where these winners end up going after they've won the contest. The last kind of bonus thing is, is this contest have performance or money involved or both? If it has both, that's great. But I would tend to go for those ones that provide performances as the award versus the money. Okay, so we're going to talk about why those four things are extremely important as far as what to look for in a contest. If a contest doesn't have all four of those things, I don't apply. That's it. I need to have all four of those things checked in my competition contest rubric before I can actually apply. So let me explain why. The first one, multiple winners. Now this one seems kind of strange. Why do you care if there's one winner, two winners, three winners, 10 winners? I just want to win the contest, right? Well, if there are multiple winners, you actually have a higher chance, right? It's just, it's just simple statistics. You have a higher chance of winning that contest if there are multiple winners. Oh, I just want to be the only winner. No, it doesn't matter if you're a winner, if this guy's a winner, this gal is a winner, it doesn't matter. You are all winners. You can all put on your CV that you won that particular contest. Maybe you all get performances of your work. Maybe you all get a certain amount of money. It's actually a lot better when you can share that award with other people because then all of you are lifted up with that one single award. So I don't look for awards that have single winners. There are some exceptions to this a little rule that I have, but I find that the awards are usually a lot more attainable and a lot more useful too in the long run if there are multiple people that win it in the same year. The second thing that I mentioned is the entry fee. Now, I know a lot of people that think that contests should be free to enter. The fact is there are people on the other side judging these contests. So even if they maybe have a $10, $20 entry fee. If there are 100 people that apply to a contest and let's say the entry fee is $10, that's $1,000 that they could distribute to, let's say the jury members that are actually going to look through all these different scores, maybe the administrator that actually puts on the contest. So this money is not necessarily given out as part of the winner's package. I think that in those cases, it is a little bit dicey. But if the money is being given out to the jury members, especially an independent panel of jury members adjudicating a contest, I think that's pretty fair to charge an entry fee $30 or lower. Above $30, it gets a little dicey for me. Like, why do you need to charge $50 for an entry fee, especially if you think you get two, 300 people to apply? That seems a little excessive to me, but you know, we can go over that when we get to the worst contests that you shouldn't apply to avoid at all costs. The third category that I have in my little composition contest rubric, is there a track record for where these winners have gone after they've won this contest? So if you see, for example, you know, one of the things that I like to do is go on composers that I admire that are a generation above me or two generations above me and see what are the contests that they won. Oftentimes these are contests that are still going on today. So if a generation or two generations above you won that contest and that contest is still going on today, that means that contest is probably very reputable that they've been able to last this long and produce a track record of successful composers. So this is something that I would keep an eye on too when you're looking for competitions. The very last thing is probably the most important thing and that is having a public performance or money or both. I tend to lean towards the public performance if I'm given a choice 
because that way I could actually earn residuals, royalties for that performance through ASCAP or BMI, depending on which one you're a member of. I'm a member, of course, of ASCAP. And the other thing is you get to meet the musicians. If it's an orchestra, you meet the conductor. You know, contests that I've won where I've maintained relationship with the conductors and they've performed other pieces or commissioned me to write new pieces. So the performance aspect of winning a contest is paramount. I mean, there's nothing more important about winning a contest, in my view, than getting a performance out of it, even more so than the money aspect. Because with the money, it's very rare that they give you a life-changing amount of money. It's usually $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $5,000. One time I was given $15,000, which is a lot of money, of course, for a young person. But it's not a life-changing amount of money, like let's say $100,000, dollars plus is of course i'm over generalizing right i don't know what everyone's situation is like but in my view a life-changing amount of money involves maybe paying off a large amount of student debt or buying a, a, an apartment or a house or being able to pay rent for a year while you're you know trying to get your career going that's what i mean by a life-changing amount of money so those are the big items in terms of what i look for when applying to a competition. Now, what are some of the competitions that I'm referring to that might be good competitions that fulfill these requirements? Well, one of them is the ASCAP Morton Gold Composer Award. This is an award given out every year to composers under the age of 30, and this involves just a cash prize. So there's no public performance that's associated with it, but you get a nice cash prize that goes with it, and it's a very long-running competition. It's been going on for a very long time, so this is one that I highly recommend that composers apply to every year. The BMI Student Composer Award, this is another very um, similar kind of award, but you have to be, I believe, under 27 years old to win this award, and you still have to be in school to win this award. So it has a bit more restrictions, but it still has the same kind of idea about winning a monetary award, having multiple winners, having a very reputable jury, take a look at your music, etc. By the way, for the ASCAP and the BMI awards, you don't need to be a member of either organization to apply for these awards. You can be a member of one and apply to the other and vice versa. You can be not a member of either. I don't know why you wouldn't be a member of either if you were in the United States, but that's a story for another day. As far as orchestra competitions go, there are a few that are really exceptional, like the American Composers Orchestra Underwood Readings, which basically is this program where you take an orchestra piece that you've already written, and in New York, the American Composers Orchestra would read your pieces over a span of two days in front of a public performance, or rather in front of a public audience. So in that way, you get two performances out of it in reality because they performed it, in a sense, twice, and you get this recording of your piece out of the whole thing, as well as getting to know all the other composers that also won that contest and are also receiving readings from the orchestra during that two-day period. You also get mentored by you know composers that are a generation, two generations above you. And it's just a fantastic experience, especially if you've never been to New York. I can tell you the first time that I was involved with the American Composers Orchestra. I was 19 years old, I believe, and it was my first and maybe second time in New York, and it was just so exciting and just a great opportunity to get your feet wet in the orchestra world, so I highly recommend that one. There's, of course, the Minnesota Orchestra Composer Institute, which is a very you know amazing one, of course, because you're dealing with an orchestra that's a top 20 orchestra in the US, and they're extremely professional, they play new music extremely well, and Osmo Vanska is a terrific conductor that takes the music extremely seriously. And this one is amazing because you get five public readings of the piece. So four of them are public rehearsals, and one of them is a public performance. So not only are you getting a fantastic performance and recording out of this Minnesota Orchestra Composer Institute, you're also getting five times the amount of residuals you would get from one performance. So this is a good one in terms of money and uh, the performances. Not to mention you get to work with Kevin Putz, which is also amazing because he's just a fantastic guy and a fantastic composer. Now, 
on to the main event. The worst contests for composers. The worst contests. The ones that have one possible winner. I mean, this to me, I mean, if, if there are very, very rare exceptions. There are very rare exceptions of this, but why would you apply to a contest where there's 500 people that apply and there's one winner? I mean, the, even if you wrote the greatest piece in the world, there might be a chance that, you know, the jury members might th think that your piece is not aesthetically correct for this particular contest, or maybe, you know, they already have somebody in mind that they want to win this contest. So, you know, these, these contests that have one possible winner, I just think that they are, the statistics are so poor in terms of winning one of these contests that it almost, you know, unless it's like really easy to apply for, like you just have to, you know, click a couple of buttons and you're done within 10 minutes. I don't think that they're worth the time, the investment of time that is to apply to them. So that's consideration number one. Consideration number two, is the entry fee higher than $30? I believe to run a contest these days, there's no reason to be a to be charging 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, in some cases over $100 for a contest. If you're a competition, you know, uh, organization, you're an organization that's running a competition, for example, and you're doing the correct amount of advertising, the necessary amount of outreach to get your contest out there, there is no reason that your contest shouldn't be drawing four or five, 600 applications. That's how many most reputable contests get in terms of uh, contestants. So if you're charging, let's say, $100 to make the math easy, and you have 500 applicants, what does a contest need $50,000 in application fees for? I mean, really. I mean, that means that they're basically running their operation in terms of their operating costs for their organization or ensemble with the contest money which is a pseudo pyramid scheme. So I would watch out for these competitions. These are usually also not the ones that bring you to the next step in your career either. These are competitions that are trying to take advantage of those trying to move up in terms of the career as composers. So stay away from these. And the very last one is, what is the track record of these contests? In other words, are there composers that you admire that have won these contests? If there are no composers that you admire that have won these contests, I would just stay away. If you're modeling yourself in terms of a career out of, let's say, XYZ composer, and they haven't won these contests that you see, and I'm talking about contests that have been around for 10, 15, 20 years, then why would you even apply to these contests? It's a waste of time. It doesn't get you to the next step that you want to be. So I would stay away from these. So these are my three main things in terms of worst contests. One possible winner entry fee higher than $30, and, uh, and no track record for any reputable uh, winners that you aspire to, to emulate or uh, you just admire their music and their career. So these are, these are my uh, worst contests. I'm not going to point out any, any <laughs> contest that I deem irredeemable unless uh, there are people that would like me to share some of those. But these are just kind of the things to be mindful of. Now that that's all out of the way, where do you find these competitions? I have two websites that I go through basically once a week because they're always updating these listings. One of them is called composersforum.org. And here they list a bunch of opportunities as well as the entry fee, how to apply, etc. And it's just a very reputable website in my view. The other one is a little bit more ad hoc, but it's also a great website. It's called composerssite.com. And this website looks like it's from the 90s or something, but it also gets updated very regularly. So I would check out this website as well. I would cross-reference these websites. If you're outside the US and Canada, there are other websites for composers, but I just don't know too much about them because I generally don't apply to contests that are out in Europe or Asia simply because many of them have entry fees that are pretty exorbitant and many of them require that you be a uh, like let's say European citizen or an Asia citizen of some of those Asian countries to apply so I just don't apply to those contests usually my hope is that my career in the US would get to a point where 
countries overseas might notice what I'm doing. So that's kind of my strategy, at least for how I approach these contests. And this also gives me time to actually do what I'm supposed to do, which is write music. So I try to center my focus on the contests that are in the United States. Now, I hope from this talk, you're not gleaming from me that, oh, I need to apply to as many contests as I possibly can. That's not really what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that you should use contests as part of your toolbox of things that you should be doing besides creating music. I think that composing music is an extremely solitary act and extremely time consuming and creatively draining act as well. For me personally, it's difficult to compose for more than four hours a day. And I'm talking about focused composing without any distraction from the Facebook or the Instagram, etc. I'm talking about focused work. And the rest of the day, I like to do, you know, these kind of YouTube videos, contests, engraving, uh, messaging performers, conductors, that sort of thing, meeting with people in real life. I think it's extremely important to realize that what I'm saying is don't apply for every contest that you see. Apply for the contests that you think would further what you're doing as a composer and match with your aspirations. If you're someone, for example, that doesn't want to write choral music, you're not interested, don't apply to a bunch of choral competitions. It's literally a waste of time. If you're someone that's really interested in writing for the orchestra, but don't have any orchestra pieces, guess what? You should probably write an orchestra piece. Even if you can't get it performed, at least practice writing it and submit it to these contests and see where it gets you. Maybe you'll get a reading of the piece. Or you can have musicians read through the piece at your local um, college. Or if you go to college, even better, you can have the piece read there and then send it out to contests after that. So there has to be a focus, in my view, about what contests you apply to. Otherwise, you can be sitting in front of the computer all day applying to contests. And that takes away from your overall goal of, you know, trying to write music every single day or every other day or at least every week, right, without feeling burnt out. Because trust me, by the time you get to be, you know, I'm almost 30 years old, by the time you get to that age, there are a lot of people that burn out from composing. And if you feel like you're someone that wants to continue composing, you need to make sure that your, your focus is there when you're writing. And then when it's not, it's not focused at all. Again, this is just kind of my opinion and the way that I do things, but that's what I'd like to share with you. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you have any comments about what you've seen or have any other resources for competition listings or what you think about any of these points that I made, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. And until next week, take care.